The Seahawk. Man, nobody wants to go backwards in life. Like, nobody ever wants to go backwards in life. I told you the story about my cousin Kathy who had a cat. She found a stray cat outside her house like 15 years ago. And then she found this cat, and it was like had no hair, no nutrition. It weighed like half an ounce. She bought it in cream and tuna fish and grew its hair back. And the cat sat around sleeping all day, put on like five pounds. And then one day she didn't have cream, and she tried to give it like, uh, like regular cat food. And the cat was like, nah, talk to the paw. Don't want the food. Nobody wants to go backwards. You ever notice your brain has a protective mechanism? You were really happy when you were 19 living in that ratty apartment. And then you were really happy at 23 when you had a roommate in your first condo. And then you were really happy at 29 years old when you have that first house you rent. And now you're 42, married with kids. You look at it and think, God, I'm not moving back there. But you reminisce how it was the greatest time because your brain creates this protective mechanism, this optimism mechanism to protect you from being depressed and not seeing dark figures and dark, scary moments. And you don't want to be negative all day. You don't want to say my life stinks. And you turn around that corner and I've got debt. And you turn around that corner and I got a car payment. You turn around that corner and I don't like my living conditions. And you turn around that corner and I don't like my job. And these dark clouds. So our brain protects us. Our brain protects us. And so we're optimistic in times of crisis to get us through that. And it's funny. Everybody's like, look at LeBron and Kyrie. They broke up. Egos. Dude, once the standard is set and you've won a title, you don't want to go backwards, man. You don't want to go backwards. The Golden State Warriors get along now, but the standard's been set. They've won a title. Blame will be assigned with Golden State the minute they don't. You see this? You ever see Behind the Music on MTV? You ever see that show? Every band's the same. We were eating cans of Spam! And then they have a platinum record, and five years later, they won't even share a heroin needle. It's so sad. But that's the way it works. They start in a the garage. They would get rejected by every label. They're down to the last $18. Brothers for life. Then they get platinum records. They get rich. The standard's been set. We ain't going backwards. And if the next label isn't a platinum or gold, it tears it apart. Shaq and Kobe got along fine until they started winning titles. The minute they didn't, broke up. Detroit Pistons got along fine. Brothers for life. Then MJ sweeps them. They never won another playoff series. Like, everybody wants to blame LeBron and Kyrie, but in life, man, the reality is our brain protects us for those young years when we're broke and we're poor and we can't get ahead. And there's dark clouds around every corner, every corner. But our brain's like, positive, I see the silver lining, I'm going to get, I'm going to get there. But once you do get there, man, you're the cat. Speak to the paw. I ain't going back. I ain't eating those. Where's my cream? Where's my tuna fish? And this is what happens in pro sports. The reason the Warriors all get along now, one for one. I mean, Kyrie and LeBron, I didn't say they were great friends, but that thing deteriorated an hour after they'd lost the championship. And yesterday, LeBron comes out and listened to him. Now he's just condescending to Kyrie Irving. Listen, listen to the words. When he was ready to, to take over the keys, I was ready to give them to him. Um, so... The only thing I'm upset about is that he took a lot of the DNA and the blueprints now to Boston. That's the only thing I'm upset about, really. Other than that, I mean, I wish the kid, wish the kid great health, um, and uh, the kid wanted to do that's for his, uh, I guess, for his career. I try to do whatever I could, just try to help the kid be as great as he could be, or as great as he wanted to be, and uh, you know, and that's it. He's 32. Kyrie's 25. He's my kid. I mean, that's what happens once you reach the success. Achievement and success create a standard. And what you settle for earlier just won't do. Christine with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. 
I have a little more on this FBI uh, investigation that's going on with the NCAA. So here's a couple of the big points. The director of global marketing for Adidas Basketball paid hundreds of thousands of dollars, this is according to the FBI, in bribes to funnel prospects to Adidas-sponsored colleges, including Louisville. The Auburn assistant coach, Chuck Person, took thousands of dollars in bribes to steer players to a financial advisor and a high-end suit maker. USC assistant coach Tony Bland, Oklahoma State coach Lamont Evans, and University of Arizona's Book Richardson are also involved. Ten people are facing charges, and ten people have been arrested. You know what's interesting, Christine? In college football, the coaches recruit the players out of a high school. In college basketball, you recruit the players out of AAU systems. I like the college football system more, where Nick Saban has to go talk to a high school coach and a high school counselor, yeah. not a guy in a track suit who has a deal behind the scenes with a shoemaker. Yeah. College basketball recruiting is sleazy. It's gross. I wonder how many guys right now in the NBA have their shoe deals based on companies that were paying them in college. It, I, I don't know the answer, but it's, it's not a small number. It's not a small number. what do you do if everyone's doing it and you're trying to stay competitive? That's the real problem. It's like steroids in baseball. Baseball didn't put the clamps down, so guys yeah. are sitting there thinking, I'm 29, I'm at the end of my career, steroids is being allowed. I got a guy I'm competing for a job in Texas and Toronto, and you're letting him take it, and I got to take it because otherwise I lose my income. Like I, there is there that there is that sort of peer pressure. Like if you feel everybody's cheating, like like, but in the end, you still have to be. You own your own values and morals, and if if you can't let society or a cultural shift change your values. You just have to, yeah. you either believe in, you, you're principled in life or you're not principled. I'm not changing my show every day because somebody doesn't like my topics. Well, this is my show and this is what it is. It would be a more extreme thing. It would be like there was literally no way for you to be successful as the herd unless you compromised your values and morals. I think that's what's going on. Yeah. Right. So it's a hard choice. One of the craziest things that I read, though, too, was um, this is from Chuck Person. Um, he allegedly told a player, the most important part is that you don't say anything to anybody. Don't share with your sisters. Don't share with your teammates. That's very important because this is a violation of rules. But this is how the NBA players get it done. So they're specifically telling the players how to get away with it. Gross. Gross. Also, Dwayne Wade is reportedly nearing a commitment to sign with the Cavs and could finalize this decision as soon as tomorrow. So Dwayne Wade and LeBron probably going to be, going to be it's, reunited. It's going to be an old team, but an interesting team. They're like the all-star team of 2010. <laughs> they are. Let's be honest. I'll tell you, the team photo for the Cavs in Oklahoma City, <laughs> it looks like an Olympic team photo. I'm just excited for these. I mean, I guess you could call this a super team of 2010. But all the super teams that are forming, I'm actually really excited to watch them play. So am I. It's going to be fun. Like, Oklahoma City is going to be fun to watch. Speaking of super teams in Oklahoma City, Carmelo Anthony is now an official member of the Thunder. And so he was uh, asked an interesting question at a press conference, and he gave an equally as interesting response. How do you feel about, you know, starting at the four or the concept of starting at the four or even coming <laughs> off of the bench? And the second question is... Well, me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess that answers that part. I, I mean, I don't know where that started, where that came from. Uh, <laughs> I ain't going to play off the bench, Yes, man. he is very confident. Hey, Peter, they said I got to come off the bench. <laughs> well, that's what he thinks about that. They better not put him on the bench. <laughs> First team of the news. Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The Herd Line News. It's called the greatest college quarterback class since the mid 80s and certainly sam darnold is getting his fair share of the press he's 13 and one as a starter at a football program usc they're fifth in the country they face what many believe is their actual toughest road game of the year friday night at ranked washington state and sam darnold via the coward global satellite network <laughs> Our satellite network only has to go down the street today because Sam is sitting there in his USC gear. Uh, Sam, how are you? So when you hear guys like me or other people talk about Sam Darnold and uh, NFL and USC, like how do you not hear it and how do you not think about it? Or do you not even listen to it? Uh, I mean, you definitely hear it. Uh, 
it gets around somehow, but at the same time, you just try to put it, you know, in the, you just put it away. You don't really think about it at all. Uh, you know, you hear it, you say, oh, that's that, and then you just kind of move on. Because um, I think when you get too caught up in what people are saying behind the scenes, uh, you know, you can just get caught up in it. And I think that's that's kind of the beauty of sport. It's, it's about who moves on um, and who can – 